So let's talk Python. Let's talk about getting uh, all set up with our uh, our programming language that we're going to be using. So I just want to let you know, um, this, uh, I have two windows open obviously right now. I have one, the activity, 132, that's sort of the introduction to Python. I also have uh, nthought canopy uh, as an editor window. And to get the nthought canopy open, uh, if you're running it for the first time, it's going to take a little bit longer, but you would want to call and run nthought canopy. So when you open nthought canopy for the first time, it is going to set up a user profile and it does kind of require an internet connection because it's going to be using your own login, at least this is a school specific uh, thing. So, but once it's all set up for the first time, it doesn't take as long to open up um, and that's okay. I also noticed that as I, uh, as I was doing this, my Python thermal cra kernel crashed, so I'm going to restart that and we hit restart. And if you ever need to do that, basically if you look down, you see that the editor has two windows. You have a uh, IPython session on the bottom and you have a uh, code editor on the top and um, you know regular code can be put in on the top that basically would allow you to type in specific functions and routines and methods and stuff uh, that we're going to be typing and then on the bottom we get to run those we also can run single line commands or multiple you know small loops or try different things down in the IPython editor and the IPython editor is very good for um, for checking those things out so let's try a couple of things uh, on that they have you doing in this activity uh, to start off with so you know here's the screenshot that tells you about this and tells you about this I also want to point out that when we're doing activities in, in, in uh, Python that it's going to tell you where it goes based on a color so for example if you see this line right here that I've highlighted uh, this line is uh, is asking for an input and this is in the IPython window and you can tell it's IPython because of this green bar right here. Uh, if we want to put them into the code editor, we'll show you later the color is different. So, all right, so number five talks about defining specific items and uh, when we have code that somebody has already written and we're going to use them, they're usually grouped in what's called modules. These modules are included with the installation. There's others that we will install later on in the semester. Um, and then we can import them, which means we use them. We're bringing them up to be used. Uh, and then all, they're also stored in libraries that come with Canopy. So the one we're going to import right now is something called matplotlib, which allows us to display graphs and work with data. Um, and we use that a lot in the third section of the, of, the, um, of the course. So all we have to do is just type in all four of these lines down here. We type them in one at a time and we press enter. So for example, import matplotlib.pypLOT as PLT. And what we're doing there is we're importing it to be used, but we're also renaming it so we don't have to reference this large string of numbers. We just reference it at three characters. So we type that in and then again, now we, anytime we use um, any code from that library, we just have to call it PLT, which is nice. So we're now going to use a function that's going to pick 10,000 numbers along a normal curve. Now you don't have to know uh, at this point, if you're in statistics, you may know what a no normal curve is, or if you really paid attention to IUD, you'll know what a normal curve is. But um, for now, just understand that we're picking it and against some sort of bell curve, and you can kind of see what that bell curve looks like on the bottom right here. And then if we type in plt.hista, we're going to make a, that makes, that makes a histogram of the uh, list of values that we picked in A. And then if we type in plt.show, and sometimes we don't have to type that, in this case we don't, uh, it'll bring that figure up for us on here. Let me just type that in and see, make sure that we don't get, yep, so that's that. That's the one. Okay, so there it is, you know, as an example, uh, your graph, you know, obviously your graph that you type in here may vary, but as you can see, most of the numbers are picked within zero and negative two, because as the bell curve dictates, most of your data when you pick along a normal curve or have a normal curve that's uh, or data that fits a normal curve, you're looking at about two thirds or a little more than two thirds of your data between within zero and one uh, standard deviation. Again, if you don't know what that is, you talk statistics. That's statistics there for you. So, um, 10,000 random numbers from a normal distribution picked. Here it is, right there. So. Um, you know, Python obviously can do that very, very fast. That you know, doing that manually would take a long time. Doing that in Excel would also require a little bit more programming. But Python can do things like that very, very fast, very, very, uh, very efficiently, which is great. So, um, a couple things that we'll, you know, and I'm not going to walk through the whole activity here, but I do want to point out some of the very important things that you do have to do pretty much every time um, that you start a uh, Python session. So, in this case. Uh, number one, you're going to look at your work, working directory. Now, if you're on a student laptop, you don't have to change this working directory, and I'll show you later how to navigate to it. Um, but 
you know, for example, mine is right here, c dot c slash users, Jeffrey dot Coppertite, that's me. Um, and your uh, any files I create, any logs I start, any code I write is going to be st by default saved into this directory. So if you want it in a different directory, you can hit this arrow and you can select change working directory and you can change it to another folder that you may want. Maybe you want it on your desktop, maybe you want it in your documents, uh, whatever suits uh, suits you the best. Now. We're going to also do something here, and we're going to turn on what's called session logging. Now, we're going to log what we put into the, um, into the IPython window by using this command at the start. So we're going to do dash ORT, and those are, lo those are called options or flags uh, that we set for different things. For example, the T is a timestamp, and O is, is overwrite. So if we have a log that already is called what we're about to call it, it's going to overwrite that and replace it with what we're logging now. So in this case, we're going to log start dash ORT, and I'm going to use my initials, 132, for the assignment, and call it del LOG for log. Now when I do this, it's going to let me know what I've just put in here. Raw input logging, output logging, the R is for raw input logging, output logging is on, and time stamping is on. So the T tells me that when I type something in, it's going to tell me what time I typed it in um, as well. So and then of course the state is active because I just started it. And when I want to stop logging, I type uh, percent log stop uh, to do that. Now the other thing that we're going to be able to use here is we're going to be able to use comments. So for example, I may say the comment at the beginning like that to illustrate that I'm logging something and then kind of when I open the log file at a later time I can see oh this is what I did, this is what the log was showing, right? And then when I press enter it brings me to the next input line. Now it already has written this to the log, okay? And as I type things into this, it'll type all the inputs, it'll type all the outputs because I've turned on output logging. Uh, it'll, type, it'll tell me everything that basically goes on in this window and write it to disk, write it to file so we can have it later, which is very, very, he very helpful. A lot of times you'll be answering questions and be asked to answer those questions as a comment. Uh, in your IPython log, so do pay attention to that as well when that when we call for that. Now, let's talk about some types, okay? Some data types. So we had a presentation yesterday talking about the four basic data types in in, in Python. They are integer, they are string, they are uh, float, and they are boolean. Okay. So for example, and I can sort of see these four right here, right? I didn't say them necessarily in order, that's okay. Um, and we can have Python do very basic math. If we type 5.3 in, it'll tell us that the, that the output is 8. So we can ha have it do basic math for us. We can have it assign specific values and we can do different uh, things depending on the data types that we use. So if I put in, for example, a decimal point, instead of 5.3, the output's an integer, but if I put 5.3 point, I get an output of 8.0. So this output here, even though it's value, the value is the same, this output here is a different type. This is a float, okay? So I, would, I could say, for example, I'm just putting this in just for the video, 8.0 is a float, whereas 8 is an integer, okay? So those two data types mean two different things. Obviously, an integer can't have a, data, can't have a decimal point or a decimal value, so anytime you're outputting as an integer, you're going to uh, basically cut off your decimal. If I type in 7 times 2, I get 14. If I type in 7 times 2 point, I get 14.0, okay? So, you know, we want to throw that. And then, of course, here's the example here they tell you in the activity. Um, might, I might want to have you comment things by using what's called an inline comment. And then if you can always start an inline comment by using the pound sign, okay? So I might say, for example, you know, if you do int times int, that returns an int but int times float returns a float. So anytime you want to get a float value output, you have to make one of your values uh, a float. All right. That also goes for division. So if I do 7 divided by 2, for example, I get 3. Well, we know 7 divided by 2 is not 3, it's 3.5. But if I want it to display as a, point, as, a, as a float, I can say 7 divided by 2 point, and now it does display 3.5. Okay. And of course, I would log here, you know, 7b, what about that, right? So a lot of times, like I said, I will ask you to answer questions from the activity as a comment in the IPython window, okay? So I would throw on here 7 point B, sorry, uh, 7 B, you know, int divided by int returns an integer, but int divided by float returns a float, okay? And return is another word for output, by the way. Return is another word for output. Now. This activity has us using functions and using assignments, okay? So I can also say a, a equals 2, right? And what that does is now that stores in the register, in, the, in, the, in a RAM register, that I've assigned a value, uh, a variable called A, and I've assigned it a value of 2. Now the data type of this is an integer. 
because I type two, right? If I want two point, I, I, I can assign it and, be, and it would be a float. Now, once I, and I'm not, not going to do the inline comments here, but you'll do that later on uh, to try these when you try these in the activity, okay? Uh, I can also use that variable and evaluate expressions. So for example, if I type A, it'll tell me that that's two. If I type A times seven, I'll get 14, because two times seven is 14. If I do three to the second power, uh, I can get nine. If I do A to the second power, I get four, right? So um, I also can, like I said, and just so you know, uh, in Python, your exponent is not three caret two, right? Your exponent is three double multiply two, okay? So your exponent command is slightly different than what you're used to, say, in Microsoft Excel. Now, we also can, oh, by the way, this one thing, other thing on here, tells us that what if, uh, you know, if we do 23 to the 43rd, 23 to the 43rd, right? It tells us a very, very large value because, well, it is a very large value. 23 times itself 43 times is incredibly large. So this L, even though you might think it stands for large, it actually uh, is long. And that's actually a different kind of data, data type. It's not an integer. An integer has an upper limit. Uh, and that upper limit, I believe, is 65,536, which is 2 to the 16th power. Um, and I pretty sure that I'm, you know, in the back of my head, I'm thinking like, I think that's right. Uh, but if we go beyond that, we have to increase or change the type of data that we're storing. And so we type and store it as a long integer. Uh, and this L indicates that that's, this number does continue past that. So if we assign a value, uh, a variable for this value, that value would be stored as a long, which is different than an int. Okay, uh, although uh, only because of the length of the number. Now Python also includes what are called built-in functions. Okay, built-in functions. There is only about 80 of them, and there's a link here to kind of show you what those are. And I am going to uh, ask you in this activity, uh, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll talk about it in class. But I'm going to ask you in this activity to document five sample built-in functions from this link. Okay, so if I click this link, I can sort of bring that up, and I can. I'm not going to do it here because I want to, you know, keep these these inputs clean. But if I control click, I can click that up, and I can pull up all the different built-in functions that are in here. Those are ones that are always available to you. They're not necessarily in a module or in a library, um, but absolute value is one of them. So absolute value, you put a number inside or a variable inside, it will return the absolute value. Okay, so now. In addition to the built-in functions that Python has, we also can write our own functions. So I'm going to, you know, the, I'm going to conclude the video here by kind of talking about uh, the format of us writing functions and, and sort of the uh, comments and the our comments about the the what do they all mean. So for example, if I go up to my code editor, remember how back at the beginning of this video I clicked create file here? Well, at the code editor I can write a function. Okay, and I can write that function if I kind of look and see. Oh, by the way, the uh, blue lines right here, blue lines indicate that we type these into the code editor, which is the top window. The bottom window is our IPython. We show that with a green line in the text document. Okay, so um, I can write this function, right? And I can call the function or define the function by using the DEF command. Okay, and the nice thing is IPython, uh, sorry, this uh, Python program, Nthought Canopy, does color code things for us very nicely. So the green is a command, the blue is a name. In this case, we're calling it add tip. And we're going to call it add tip. And then we're going to open a set of parentheses and we're going to insert what are called arguments. Now in, this, now, in most functions, we tell it what we want to operate on or do something with, right? Those are called inputs or they are called arguments, OK? So in this case, this function is going to use two arguments. It's going to use a total amount and it's going to use a tip percent, OK? Now, when I put a colon at the end, that, uh, that's telling Python that this block is now beginning. And then it automatically indents this next block. So now, unlike Scratch or unlike MIT App Inventor, Python uses indents to group its code, whereas uh, Scratch and, Py and, and MIT App Inventor used blocks. Okay, So we're going to start writing our function. Now, the first thing we're writing, and it's a good, ha it's a good habit to get into, if we throw three apostrophes in here and then write what the function is doing, Okay, and I like to also I like to add in even though this isn't on the uh, uh, thing I like to include the arguments that are thrown in there as well even though I believe Python might actually show you what those arguments are but nonetheless I like to do that okay so what I, I've just put in here is sort of like you can think of it as help text and it kind of is but it's uh, it's called a doc string okay that doc string is basically your object of a doc string if you put it as the first line of a function this is what would happen if I went down here and I typed in help and then the function name, and it will tell me what the doc string is for that function, okay? Which is really cool. 
So it also tell it also will tell me, and I can see right here that it does kind of give me an argument. So I don't necessarily have to include this, okay? So I'm actually going to go ahead and just take that out because it will report that. Okay, so now what I can do now is write the function. Okay. So in this case, the function is very basic, okay? The, it's basically calculating the tip value by using the two arguments, the tip present times the total. And then what we're going to do is we're going to return the total amount plus the tip because the purpose of the function is to retur is return how much the bill is going to be with tip. Okay, so it calculates it on line three and then returns those two quantities added together as round four. So in other words, when I run this function and type it in on the IPython window, it's going to tell me, the output of the function is going to tell me what the total is plus the tip. All right, so now the function is written and we can sort of indicate that, right, by backspacing. And if we want to write further functions, we can write further functions at this point. But note that all the text for this function is indented for spaces. Okay, and uh, later on when we start throwing in some branching, like some if-then statements, we're going to have also indents for those, uh, and we'll talk about that. So, so Python uses indents to group code. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to test this function out. So in order to test this function out, we're going to have to store it in memory, okay? And the, the way they do that is we run it. So we hit this icon right here, run the current file, and if there's any errors, it will, it will tell us what those errors are, but if it doesn't give us any errors, that means it is a function that does work. Now, if I go to if I go to the run menu, just so I know like run files, control R is a shortcut for that, and you can also do that here. Now, if I want to run, test that function out, I could type it in, add tip, and then I open parentheses, and it will sell, there it is, right? See, so it tells me what the doc string says. It also tells me what the argument said, which is very helpful, okay? So if I say, for example, I typed in, um, if I typed in $50, my, my bill is $50, and I want to leave an 18% tip, right? 0. I was at 0 0.18 in this, the way that I worded this function, right? And then I hit net enter, it'll tell me that I owe $59 on the bill, okay? So um, this video covered this video covered basically how to, um, you know, open up Python, how to work with the IPython editor, but at the same time it also uh, showed you some introductory stuff to writing functions. So, um, you know, I also want to mention that this activity obviously does, co does continue, and there are some more uh, vocabulary words for you to, to examine on here as well. But when you do this particular activity, you are going to write a couple of functions on your own. You are going to uh, have your session logged, and you're also going to you're also going to um, have to log it and submit a log. But we'll talk about that in a particular class. But this video's purpose is all set. All right. So have a good day. Take care.